Lord, I just thank you, Lord Jesus. I give you all the praise. I thank you for today. I thank you, Lord, that it's another day to worship you and to glorify your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I want us to turn to the book of 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 to 5. It says, But know this, that in the last days, Perilous times will come, for men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, Lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, and from such people turn away. So the Bible is telling us very clear here that there is a time coming in the last days that people will exhibit these characteristics which we are seeing more now than ever before. And we're actually seeing the media, which is also using their narrative to push, to even cause this type of behavior. So it's as though like people have become completely rebellious towards any form of authority and nobody wants to be accountable. Everyone is being offended about something and no one wants to be accountable anymore. They just want to go about doing things their way. So I want to look about that today. When we turn to the book of Proverbs 9, verses 7 to 9, it says, He who corrects a scoffer gets shame for himself, and he who rebukes a wicked man only harms himself. Do not correct a scoffer, lest he hate you. Rebuke a wise man, and he will love you. Give instruction to a wise man, and he will still be wiser. Teach a just man, and he will increase in learning. Hallelujah. So people who are rebuked usually fall within two categories. According to Proverbs 9, 7 and 9, we see in the way that they react to the rebuke, to the particular rebuke, which one are we? The first is the scoffer or the wicked, as it's described in this scripture. This person will become angry. And that's what we're seeing today. We're seeing police informants trying to speak to someone about their behavior. And automatically they become what? They become angry towards those things. Now, I'm not saying that every police officer is justified by their behavior is what we've seen recent and also throughout time. But we are seeing a general rebellion that seems to be amongst people, especially in the younger generation today. Or we see another person, when they are rebuked, when they are chastened, when they are corrected. Now remember the Bible says God loves those that he chastens. He loves those that he corrects. How do we take that correctment? Well, this person is a wise person. So this person will love you. They will receive it with a humble heart. Now, some people may not take it co completely 100% first off, but if they come to you later and say, you know what, pastor, what you said was absolutely right. That's the type of people God is looking for. People that are willing to humble themselves, take on correction, and then prosper in their ways. Because why? They will become wise. They will prosper. They will go on and increase in learning. See, remember that your reaction to correction and to reproof is going to clearly indicate your character. If you get angry and you reject it, then you're a mocker. You're a wicked person. But if you're a wise person, you will become wiser and increase in learning in a generation of society where people are very sensitive. They're so sensitive today. Let us choose to be wise. The next time you get a rebuke, remember the Lord is loving on you. Hallelujah. Proverbs 3.12 says, For whom the Lord loves, 
he what he corrects just as the father the son in whom he delights and proverbs 28 verse 23 says then that uh, then he that rebukes a man shall find more favor afterward than he that flatters with a tongue and that's the problem i think we have today is we have too many men of god today wanting to flatter people wanting to make them feel comfortable in their environment and not willing to challenge the status quo of what is happening today within society for you to draw closer to God for you to be his child hallelujah he he wants to correct us because he loves us so let us turn to galatians 6 verses 1 to 5 brothers if anyone is caught in any transgression you who are spiritually spiritual should restore him in a spirit of gentleness keep watch on yourself lest you too be tempted bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ for if anyone thinks that he is something when he is nothing he deceives himself but let each one test his own work and with his own reason to boast and be in himself alone and not in his neighbor for each one will have to bear his own load so this is talking about hey you know what we have a responsibility we need to learn to be accountable to our brothers and sisters in Christ hallelujah but when we also go to correct people we don't go with the spirit that says hey you know what I'm better than you no because the bible says you know um you know remember where you've come from lest you fall You know the, the the question is is that when you know where you've come from with Christ and he saved you from a lot then you will love much but if you don't even know you're saved you're going to go around with a self-righteous judging attitude of everybody else but God is saying to remind ourselves to come to one another with a gentle spirit that that person may be corrected we don't avoid those conversations we don't avoid those things but we've got to learn to be accountable with people So what exactly is accountability? An accountability relationship should be one in which two or more believers prompt each other to grow closer to the Lord through questioning, through challenging, through admonishing, through confessing and engaging. So the purpose of this mentoring should be to help each other grow spiritually. Generally, when we think of accountability, we only think of negative aspects of that accountability. And usually believers think of this as sharing their sins with others. Well, this is part of accountability. There is more to it than this. Accountability should incorporate not only the confessions of sins, but also the sharing of burdens. the sharings of troubles the sharings of the cares of this world and also most importantly it should share in prayer which is the most important hallelujah it should be an uplifting time of worship and fellowship that helps those involved grow closer to each other and in the lord so if you haven't got that a type of accountability we seem to today because of social media we are able to get into people's homes and i've found that through the prophetic utterance that god is speaking to people but there is a sort of a a form of accountability because as you open yourself up to receiving the words that god gives god comes to bring correction God comes to bring and challenge you and cause you to want to grow deeper in prayer, to grow deeper in fasting, to grow deeper in worship. So all these tools that that this small ministry is providing you is to help you to be accountable. And if you can find someone around you within a person to person relationship then even better and you can fellowship together. But if you don't have that as obviously many people have been going through the covid-19 uh pandemic people have been shut away from people so in a way this social media platform has been another form of church today it doesn't replace the natural church but it is no different because it's still church there is still accountability you know you some people feel more free 
to send an email to share their sins or their deepest secrets than they are to go to the front of the church at the altar and share them in front of people, right? So, so there is a kind of accountability that comes even when you're sitting under such a ministry like this. But God also wants us to have face-to-face -face relationships with people. You might be saying, well, pastor, I don't have that at present. That's fine. As you pray, God will start to send people. God will start to send people that are remnant, just like you, that you may draw closer uh, to God. So what should Christians subject themselves to this type of mentoring? Well, when we go to James 5 verse 16, it says to confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. So there is power in confessing sins. When revival comes, there seems to be such an openness of confessing sins. And that's what we're believing for. We're believing there's going to come a time when the revival will come. People will want to be accountable. People will want to be healed because they've got someone that they can share, not only to God, but also to one another. And God, we can grow together as believers. So in Ephesians chapter 4, it talks about unity in the body of Christ. And in this particular chapter, Paul talks about the importance of Christians encouraging and holding each other up. We need each other so that we may not stumble in our Christian walk. No Christian can do it alone. You can't do this walk alone. You need to have other people with you. Not only is it important to be involved in a local church, but also finding someone with whom you can actually have accountability to is essential in our spiritual walk without encouragement and support from others. Christians will become weak. Let me say that again. Without support from other Christians that you can be accountable to, your Christian walk can become weak. Now, I just want to be honest with you. I receive 160 emails a day. And by the grace of God, for over a few years now, I've been trying to reply back to everyone. But I've specifically disciplined myself so that I can be effective in this period of time to fill the void, to keep people in their walks, in their close walks with the Lord, keep them into holiness, keep them into righteousness, keep them into that closeness with the Lord. But if, if you have people accountable to you around you, you can also call those people. You can speak to those people and God will bring those right people to you. But I understand today that there are a lot of churches today. They don't understand about warfare. They don't understand about witchcraft. They don't understand about deliverance. So therefore, this ministry seems to be fitting the vo filling a void like many other ministries similar to ours. We're filling a void and that void, the church is not currently uh, ministering. It's not talking about these subjects. So therefore, when they have a spiritual problem, they need to go to someone that understands their spiritual problem. Otherwise, they're just going to be or just go, go on to medication, go on to this. Now, I'm not saying um, that all their advice is bad, but it just seems to be the common occurrence today that we're seeing within the church. Let's look at this. We know that. Satan looks to weaken our relationships with other believers because he knows that strong Christian relationships make strong Christians, which in turn means being effective to pull down the powers of the enemy's kingdom. See, when we don't have close relationships, we're going to lose that authority. We're not going to be able to pull down the strongholds. And then all of a sudden you isolate yourself. That's exactly what the devil wants you to do. The devil wants you to go around saying, you know what? I can do this on my own. I don't need to be accountable to anyone. I'm only accountable to God. That's why I hear a lot today. Let me tell you, you ain't going to go too far with that attitude. You've got to, you've got to learn to be humble. You've got to learn to say, hey, you know what? Bali's pastor, I need to be accountable. Look, I need to be accountable. I can't just go and do this on my own either. So, so we all need to be accountable to each other so that our ministries, our Christian walk will be blameless before the Lord. Now, we can see that it's important that things that why there is still a lack of accountability in the church today, you might ask. Well, that could be one cause, many reasons why formal accountability is uncommon today. 
But here are some of the reasons that I also want to bring up. People hate conflict. The problem with worldly churches are that the leaders don't often engage in accountability, either through following up or, or members tasks or home visits or church discipline. We find that some churches have become so big, they don't even have enough time to go and know you. You're just a number. You're just a you're just, OK, that person's tithing. They're a member, you know. Basically, as long as you're tithing, you're a member. Now, I'm not having a go at tithing or anything of those things because all those things are important. But what I'm saying is there seems to be a lack of accountability where the relationship with the pastor seems to be so distant. Now, imagine if I'm answering 160 emails or messages a day, right? I mean a day. And it's only by the grace of God that, you know, how, how can not... A, a church that has 100 people or 500 people not even communicate with the people. Oh, I, try, I, I, I have a struggle with that. We can't be everywhere, but we definitely need to train people underneath us to be able to help with the workload of that ministry. And there seems to be a lot of distance uh, between that particular thing. Let's look at this. Christians do not understand that sanctification is a community project. Many texts in the Bible assume or state outward that one of the ways we grow as Christians is through gospel-centered conversation with one another. The New Testament places great importance motivating one another to love and to do good deeds according to Hebrews 10 verse 24 to 25 and also bearing each other's burdens, according to Galatians 6 verse 1, which we read, and instructing one another, according to Romans 15 verse 14, coming together and instructing with one another. And many Christians are never taught that sanctification is not just an individual thing, but it is, you know, where iron sharpens iron, where two people are together. We need to have that type of fellowship, that type of accountability, so that we can grow stronger in the Lord. Now, let's look at another one. People like their privacy. Accountability is about confessing uh, sin to one another, but few people today like the idea of divulging with their temptations, with their sins, and the state of their hearts. This is far too personal for some, and they don't want to share it. Well, let me tell you, you want to keep and hold all those things, then that could also cause sickness to you because we just read before that when we learn to confess to one another, it what it brings healing. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I want to be healed. I want to be free. I want to live a life that is pure unto the Lord and also unto my brethren, un un unto those that are around me. Christians are not taught seriously about biblical accountability. Now, that's a problem today because we see in James 5.16, uh, is not a suggestion, but a command. And it says, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. Hallelujah. So once again, it's bring, bringing this out. So moreover, this command is also a benefit to the health of Christians. So in this text, James mentions cases where personal sin leads to a serious physical or emotional illness calling for the elders of the church to administer healing before we get to that point. However, we should, what? We should be in the practice of regular preventative medicine. What is that of? That is confessing our sins to one another and praying for one another. So I see today, there are many people that have more mental health issues today than ever before. There are many more people today that have emotional baggage like never before. There are many people today that seem to be sick about everything, um, you know, based on the requests I get. And there's no problem with the, me receiving those, but I'm seeing a high increase in these things. So I say to myself, well, there seems to be because there's a lack of accountability in the church. We're not accountable to one another or the accountability is not taught about in the church anymore and people are no longer wanting to confront sin in the church. If we don't confront sin, then you ain't going to live a righteous life. Therefore, you're not going to be pleasing to the Lord and you're not going to prosper. 
Those that are obedient shall taste the good fruit of the land. You want to learn about prosperity? Learn to be obedient to God's word. Learn to be obedient to what he's telling you to do. Then you will prosper in all your way. Hallelujah. Christians falsely believe accountability is only for behavior modification. And that's not true. Some reject the idea of accountability because they believe it's all about fear or shame-based change. Accountability for them is about staying away from certain taboo sins so that they can avoid an, avoid an awkward conversation in the future with someone that they may have to be accountable to. But the Bible says that there is a kind of a conversation that we can have that actually addresses the heart issues. I'm not just talking about, okay, confessing your sins or whatever. Those things are good. That's just part of it. But I mean, I'm talking about a heart attitude towards certain things. And because from the heart, it's, it speaks forth exactly what's going on. What, what is coming forth from your heart? As we're seeing all these racial tensions, as we're seeing all these things, what has been on the forefront of your heart during this particular period of time? You know, the, the media are using this narrative to get everybody to be, uh, to be uh, pitched against one side to the other, against one uh, political party against the other, against one colour against the other, uh, against uh, people, against uh, police force, whatever. Whatever narrative they're using, really, they should be accountable for what they are putting right now on the news because it's causing people uh, to respond to the narrative that they're trying to put upon. Uh, the people. So some Christians have experienced unhelpful accountability. For some Christians, their accountability partners and groups simply did not work for them. They experienced no change, but what if they use this excuse for anything in which we engage? Listening to sermons, praying together, taking communion, engaging in service projects. We do not give up on any of these things. We don't give up on the fellowship with the brethren just because we had a bad experience. God may reposition you to another place. He may even position you to a place online that you're going to stay accountable to. Many, you're going to open up your heart. You're going to hear the words of correction that you may change to be a better person yourself. Now, that's why I thank the Lord that he is using in this hour He's using social media to be able to get to you and visit you. You could be just in your bedroom. You could be in your kitchen. You could be in your car and you're hearing this message right now. But if you open up your heart and you say, God, I'm going to accept this correction. I'm going to accept this. I want to be accountable. I want to make sure, Lord, that I can, um, you know, uh, obviously make heaven. That's the most important thing. We want to make heaven as a result of what we're talking about here. So Christians uh, falsely believe accountability in the church is only a crutch for when things get really bad. You know, a lot of people have said that, oh, you just use church as a crutch. You gotta learn to deal with the issues yourself. No, we need to be accountable to each other because without being accountable, you won't be able to be effective in your Christian walk. So often we seek out accountability when things have come to a head on in our lives, when we are facing a grave consequence. But the various one, uh, you know, situations that take place, but God's saying, no, I want you to come to me. Learn to not just come, hey, oh, my marriage is going down the tube. Oh, I've got problems with my business. Oh, the demons just attack me all of a sudden. Oh, I've got this pr uh, problem. I'm going to go to court. And they're going to put me into prison. Don't just come to God just because things are bad. And it doesn't mean it's bad that you come to God in those situations. But you don't have to wait for those situations to get bad before you surround yourself with the right people or the right teaching or the right people that are going to influence you to come closer to God. Christians are not disabled. Accountability makes more, most sense in a context of discipleship. So um, we need to be discipled. We're not disabled as Christians in the sense of the spiritual. We are discipled. We are discipled and God wants to disciple us. He wants us to be mature individuals. And in the context of a community of disciples, that we can go out and make an impact to be true disciples. 
Accountability is the most natural thing in the world. And that is what is lacking in the church of Jesus Christ today. That is lacking today. And let me tell you, I can spread myself so far, right? And by God's grace, I seem to be spreading myself quite far. But the truth is, we need more Pastor Roberts. We need more people. We need, we need revival. That's why my deepest cry is revival because I see the need that is there in the church today. And I see that the church is not, in many cases, is not able to, to meet that need of people's spiritual issues today. Because one, it's not taught. One, it's not understood. Or one, they're just ignorant of it altogether. Or two, they just, they reject it. People are rejecting this stuff. They don't understand. But God wants to come and bring his situation. So Christians have not tasted gospel-centered accountability in the church. The gospel of Christ is what guides and protects good accountability. Informed by the gospel, a good accountability partner will not be condemning, but gracious. Informing, informed by the gospel, a good accountability partner will treat sin seriously because Christ took sin seriously to go to the cross and deal with that sin. Hallelujah. So a good accountability partner will use the external promises of the gospel to motivate us to a higher standard in our spiritual walk. As Christians, we need to what? We need to be taught how to do this well. We need to encourage one another. Some people say, well, pastor, you encourage me. Yes, you know, but I've got to keep on pressing. It takes faith. Even when I don't feel like doing, I've got to say, God, I snap out of this. I shake it off. I'm going to finish this. I'm going to achieve this today. I'm going to do it today. And sometimes when I push through those situations, people say, wow, that was such a powerful prayer or something. I'm like, well, well, that was the grace of God. Hallelujah. That was the grace of God because it was at those times that I said, Lord, I'm weak, but I need you. I need you. And you are my strength. God wants to be your strength too today. Hallelujah. So I hope that you will have a desire for accountability, that you may be thinking that you don't know anyone or that who could even be accountable to. But God is saying to you, don't give up hope because God has what? He's first of all, maybe this is the first point of contact. God has given you this first point of contact. There are other people that will be a point of contact. If you have a good church, that's your point of contact. That's your pastor. That's your, the elders in the church, whatever it is. Maybe it's a good family member. There is a strong person in the faith. Whoever that person is, there are people that God will bring around you and that you yourself will be that person that will be able to be an accountable person for someone else. You'll be able to help someone else. Hallelujah. As you allow God to help you. The Lord doesn't ask us to do something without providing a way. And he also said he'll provide a way of escape. He will be faithful to you. Ask the Lord to show you who that mentor is. And in the meantime, ask your pastor or your spiritual mature Christians around you for advice. You know, I don't mind taking advice from people, but there are also other people around you that you can ask. And I'm a big advocate of building the church up. I'm a big advocate of encouraging you to sow into your local churches or whatever it is. But I'm saying you've got to go also where you're being spiritually fed. If your church is not spiritually feeding you, then go and find a place that is. Right? And you can find that in different forms. You can even find that here through this online forum. And it's not something I've promoted before, but I've seen it. And the fruit is there. The fruit is there through the testimonies that people are saying, you know what, Pastor, since we've been following this, since we've been understanding this, we're growing so much stronger. And I believe that that's also an indication for me to bring out more training programs where I believe that people are going to go to the next level. But I just realized that people are serious. There are serious people that follow this YouTube channel. Or maybe you're just coming across for the first time. That's fine. But there are serious people that are following this YouTube channel that says, you know what? We want to see revival. We want to be part of that. And we're willing to sacrifice. We're willing to what? We're willing to do whatever God tells us to do to see this come to pass. And that is revival. You get all these people um, 
fasting and praying and, and joining in all the fasts every Friday. And that's because people said, Pastor, when do you fast? We want to fast at that time. So I just said, well, we're going to fast every Friday. That's what we do. So you can join along. Hallelujah. And that's what we want to do. So, And I'm hoping that I, I can be in the future more effective. And also, that might also include you. You might be able to help me in the future. You might be able to help me. There's people transcribing prayers. There's people translating prayers at the moment. There are people that could be uh, transcribing even some of my teaching so we can get it uh, back onto that. Because unfortunately, what happened is I, I, I had a laptop and it had all this information in and it got stolen in South Africa when I was ministering there. Unfortunately, the devil also can come in and I didn't have a secondary place for this stuff to be stored it was just there and that was just ignorance it was a lesson learned from there so imagine that you've done all these work and then all of a sudden the devils come along and try to steal it but you know one thing i've never done is i've just waited upon god and he's always brought people at the appointed time so you might be able to say well pastor we want to contribute somehow to helping this ministry because i believe that we're going to have prayers in all the major languages that will be translated all around the world. I believe that the YouTube channel will increase. I believe that potentially there could even be a television sort of part of this that will increase. But, you know, look, Pastor Robert can't do it all. Pastor Robert is willing to be used, but I don't know all these different things. I just sort of like stumble across the way. But I do my best and diligent with one. But I believe God will send divine helpers, divine helpers to come. And help in different things. So if you feel that you could possibly help, maybe you're like you're a person that makes websites. We've got a website. I need someone to update it. I can't do it all, right? Because there ain't enough hours in the day. Like, you know, and there is there is great need that I see that people have today. And I see the need and I say, God, we need to meet this need. And I know that I'm doing it for a period of time until you come along and raise up other people so if you feel that this ministry at some point you're accountable to that you're enjoying it and you want to help then i welcome your ways of how you could possibly help us expand this ministry and how do we start that initially just by you forwarding those prayers those prophecies those teachings those fasting programs all the different things that are available you can empower other people. You can actually bring other people and make them accountable. I know so many people that just forwarded these prayers and different things to their friends. And then all of a sudden they start following and their life changes. <laughs> like they actually start living a holy life. You know, someone that was living in a you know, de facto relationship, all of a sudden say to their boyfriend or say to their girl, I'm sorry, I can't live in sin anymore. Right? Where did that come from? Through the prayers. I didn't condemn anyone. I'm not here to condemn you. I'm here to encourage you to live a holy life, to do the, all that God wants for you. God wants you to prosper. He doesn't want you to roam around like the Israelites for 40 years and then not enter into the promised land. He wants you to enter into the promised land. What can God do? He can do more in our lives in one second if we will just submit to him. And allow him to have his way. What accountability do you have? God wants you to be accountable. Obviously to him, to those around you. And I believe that even like, because we've created like a community within even all the people commenting on YouTube. You guys have become like a community. Obviously, you know, we get a few devil worshippers and Satanists and occultists and witches and warlocks to try to come along and create confusion. Um, and, and, you know, because some people just dislike my post for, for no reason. I was like, well, how could they dislike that? But that's just, they're witches, they're warlocks. So they're going to have those people. But we're going to pray that God's going to bring revival. So as soon as someone comes upon our channel, the glory of God is just going to come and it's going to bring them in and they're going to come into a closer relationship with Jesus Christ. Let, let me tell you, we're going to another level. We've already come to another level. And God wants us to draw closer because the things of this world can never satisfy you when you realize that it's just God. I want to be, I want God. Lord, Lord, I, I want to receive correction. Lord, I want to be accountable. Lord, I want to serve you. What can I do to serve you? Maybe you can't sell everything you have and go and become a missionary like I did in the initial days. 
but you can support you can support the ministry you can support whatever you can support the vision you can also be part of that vision because i believe that this is bigger this is not just about this ministry this is about revival this is about nations this thing is huge and i believe that this revival is just going to sweep the land it's coming soon people it's coming very soon but but where are you today where are you today god wants to increase in you God wants to do great things in your life. Are you willing to be accountable? We are living in a time when everyone's rebellious, everyone's carrying on like pork chops and so forth, right? But we're also living in exciting times because we're getting sick and tired of the things that are going on. We need a gospel with power. We don't need another definition of the gospel, but we need it demonstrated in power today like never before. And you just have to look. The testimonies that come in, it's incredible. There are so many. It's, 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 it's unreal what God is doing in this hour. And he wants to do it through you. And I just thank you for those that are listening, for those that have even bothered to, to stay on this long. Some of you say, well, oh, your prophetic utterances are too long. They go beyond 15 minutes. I'm sorry. I've just got to do what God's called me to do. But when you become hungry, you're not watching the time. You're not saying, well, pastor's talking too long. You're hungry. You want more. You say, because there is, there is no time in revival. You'll be in services all night until the morning. Wow. What's going to happen? God's preparing me. God's saying, hey, Kay, are you going to be able to do it 24-7? Because when revival comes, it'll be a lot easier for you. But I'm starting to build up. I'm starting to build up my strength to be able to... I don't want to grow weary, by the way. That's why I've got to spend time with God too. But God wants us to be strengthened. He wants us to have endurance, to run the race, to finish this to the end. Most revivals stop because people become weary. I say, God, I don't want to become weary. I want to keep going. I want to be stronger than you. I want to increase my fasting life. I want to, I want to be supernaturally strong. And also physically, I want to take care of this temple, healthy food and so forth. So Lord, I pray for each person, Lord, that is listening today. Lord, they are a blessing. Lord, that you will bless each person. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus. Lord, even all those that are participating in the fastings and all the great things that are going to come in the future. Lord, that you'll give me the grace to do more for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, surround us with your people. Surround us with mind like people. Surround us with people, Lord, that, um, that really want to see the advancement of the kingdom of God in every way. I just bless each person today. Touch them. Fill them today. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen.